morning. Just uh, give everybody a minute or so to tune in today for the Healing Minute. So I'm playing a, a lovely track. This is from the CD Celtic Fairy Lullaby. I'll leave it just playing for a moment or two. A bit of a grey morning here in Reading in the UK. But, uh, hopefully the sun will come out Easter Saturday. Hopefully we'll see a bit more sunshine later. So I'll just leave you with the music for another 30 seconds or so. Just want to give everybody the opportunity to tune in before we before we start. actually read some of the comments this morning. I'm using my new iPad instead of the phone so fingers crossed we stay online and we don't have any gremlins coming in today. As John always says those gremlins do come <laughs> the best for us at times. And believe it or not we've been going over a year now with the Healing Minute um, online that is on Facebook. We've been doing it for many years at the Sanctuary as you well know. So today is actually number 370 of doing the Healing Minute. Um, we do have, we've had a few gremlins over the last year, as many of you will have spotted. Um, but we've managed to provide the Healing Minute on Facebook every day for 370 days. And my thanks go out to all my uh, friends and uh, volunteer colleagues from the Sanctuary who have many been able to maintain this. Uh, right across Christmas and everything. We were really so pleased because when we started it a year ago, we thought we were going to be doing it for weeks, maybe a couple of months. We had no thought last March, April, that a year down the line, um, we'd still be in this situation. And we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and maybe the new normal will come into force later on in this year. Um, but as I've said to you before, and I've probably repeated myself many times, we are going to continue with the Healing Minute on Facebook. Um, and I believe that we'll continue with many of the events whenever we can um, as well forevermore. We've got to look at the technicalities of doing things like Cygnus back at the Sanctuary and how we can bring that to you live as we, as we do it at the Sanctuary. Um, onto Facebook and onto Zoom. Um, same with the services that we hope to hold in, in the chapel um, in the coming future. And then we have the 75th anniversary, of course, which is a very, very big event for us all at the Sanctuary. That's going to take place in September. The penciled in date is Saturday the 4th of September, but that will be confirmed in due course. Um, and I'm going to do everything in my power to bring that to everybody live on the day um, so that those of you who can't quite make it down to Guildford, Dorking and into our lovely village of Shear um, will be able to join in the celebrations so lots to look forward to as we get through the summer um, so fingers crossed we'll, we'll all be able to meet up on the 4th of September one way or another <laughs> oh just to let you know by the way those of you who might uh, live down in Somerset. I've arranged dates now for the regional healing to take place at Claverham in Somerset. Uh, that will be, um, I think it's about the 17th, 18th 
of August. Um, and also we intend to be down at the Hamblin Trust at Bosham in West Sussex. That's the weekend of the 14th and 15th of August for our regional healing there. But we'll publicise all that well in advance. It'll be in the Healer magazine. Um, so we'll give you every opportunity to book and come and see us. And fingers crossed all being well, back to contact healing again, which will be lovely. Uh, the sanctuary is opening on the 21st of April for contact healing. Although the contact healing might still be hands off, but it will be on the couch in the blue room or the green room. Not the blue room. What am I talking about? The, <laughs> the peach room or the green room. And, uh, you know, it'll be in the room. The healers will be there. Um, but I'm not so sure whether contact healing will actually be allowed um, at that date. But it might, might be a few weeks later. But anyway, we're opening on the 21st of April. So, the healing minute. I will waffle on all morning if I'm not careful, so let's just focus on what we're really here for. Okay. Oh, sit back in your chair, on your couch, lying on your bed, wherever you find most relaxing for you, and settle it into your body by connecting with your breath. Slowly inhaling through your nose, slowly exhaling through your mouth. And do that a few times, nice and gently, just pausing between the in-breath and the out-breath. And notice how your body and mind begin to soften and relax. Close your eyes if it is safe to do so and visualise a scene from nature. And at this time of year, it's the reds and the browns, darker greens, yellows, whites. It is a sunny morning and there is a gentle cool breeze. Imagine that your body, your breath, your emotions and your mind are an extension of nature. Now take yourself to the sanctuary and we'll start our walk from the lower car park. This is the old tennis court with its rickety old pavilion to one side and ahead of you is the memorial garden. Look at that beautiful view. The trees, the bushes, marking out our loved ones memorials are surrounded by the yellow and white daffodils. The hyacinths peek out at you here and there. And the bluebells are coming up, but not quite in bloom just yet. Take a gentle stroll across the grass. Look at that lovely view down the length of the garden and out across the fields beyond. Take in the lovely energy that is all around you. The sun is shining through the treetops. The birds are singing their morning chorus and you are relaxed and enjoying all that beauty. So let us stroll now down through the woods, past the area used for the forest bathing and down to the perimeter fence. The leaves from the autumn are still crisp underfoot as you meander between the beautiful old trees that stand majestically there. Give a tree a hug. Feel the energy. That tree might even be talking to you because it has so much, so much knowledge. It has witnessed so many things over its lifetime. Past the green iron bench that is on the side of the path. Just look out at that fantastic view. The woods. Everything you expect to see there. And then turn and look out across the fields. The woods are all in glory. There's beauty at the moment. And you can look out across the lovely Surrey Hills. As you enter the meditation glade, 
stop and admire this beautiful area with its trees and bushes. And as Gary showed you last Wednesday on his Healing Minute walk, it is really glorious down there. A fallen tree will soon be carved into a lovely bench by our friend Richard. And the grass that is beginning to grow will be a couple of feet high when we get to the summer. The labyrinth is now a focal point and is such a welcome addition to the glade. As you walk across towards the bench around the tree, just look at the labyrinth there. When the wild flowers grow and the grass grows, it would be a magical pathway into the centre. And as you've probably seen from our Facebook page, Richard made a beautiful carving of the globe with the hands around the globe, which stands majestically in the middle of the labyrinth. So carry on towards the bench that surrounds the tree. Listen to the birds singing. Feel the warmth of the sun and enjoy that wonderful energy all around you. And sit on that lovely bench and take in the beautiful panoramic view. And while sitting there, focus on your breath again. And with every in-breath, that wonderful healing energy will just flow through your body going naturally to where it is most needed. Allow the tension to go from the muscles in your face, around your eyes and your jaw, and then relax down through your body. Clear your mind of any worries or concerns, and as your body becomes calm, enjoy your surroundings and that beautiful view, as we will attune now for the Healing Minute. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body. As the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. And as Harry Edwards wrote, may I be thankful for all the blessings I already have, grant me from pain and sickness, Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me that I may be conscious of their presence and so receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. Amen. And touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand. And forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. And we ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder and all the other distant healing folders around the world, that they will receive healing for their highest good. And we also request healing for their family, 
friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. And we send out our love and our healing thoughts to our own family, to our own friends, to the whole of the animal kingdom and everybody around the world, wherever they are at this time. We will have our one minute and send out our love and our thoughts. May they all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Well, thanks and blessings to you all this morning for your energy and being here with the Healing Minute. And of course to all our loved ones in spirit who join us every day at this time. So, thank you. Thank you everybody. So please continue to contact us. I know Val, Veronica, Sue, Joe, they all get bored if nobody phones them. They don't get any emails. So please keep them busy. They would uh, love to hear from you. And so would we all. So make your appointments with them and uh, have some healing or have a chat with any of the healers. Um, it's only a phone call away, an email away. No excuses now. If you'd like to chat to us, and I hope you will, Please, please be in contact. Now, uh, next Wednesday, we have the Cygnus Cafe, which will be immediately after Gary's Healing Minute at around about 20 past 10. This week, astrologer S uh, Isan Lewis, oh, I hope I've said her name properly, Isan Lewis will be talking about what the planets hold for us. She is fresh from her recent TV appearance on Good Morning Britain. So it should be a very, very interesting Cygnus uh, this Wednesday. It'll be on both Facebook and on Zoom as usual. Now, next Saturday, the 10th of April, from 10.30 to 1.30, treat yourself to a shower of self-healing and self-compassion as Sandy Edwards, and she's no relation to Harry, talks about how we often support others but overlook our own health and well-being. And tickets for this event uh, are available through Eventbrite and the details are on the website and Facebook page. But this will only be on Zoom uh, next Saturday at 10.30. It's just a Zoom um, event only. And on Sunday next week at 10.30, uh, immediately after Doreen's Healing Minute, I will be doing another Healing For You live on both Zoom and on Facebook. I will be giving everyone a 10 minute meditation followed by a 20 minute healing session directing healing to everyone. And in the same way as with the one-to-one -one healings that we do so regularly. So it's a one-to-one -one healing done to 50, 60, 70 people all at the same time. The energy is fantastic because this will be one, two, three, about the fourth one I've done. Um, and they have been wonderful in the past. So I hope you can join us next Sunday after Doreen at 10.30. In the meantime, I hope you'll join Doreen tomorrow morning for the Healing Minute and she'll be here as usual just before 10 o'clock and on Monday morning Tracy will be back for her usual slot again just before 10. Now my reading today is the final chapter in Felicity Medlin's book written by her from her home on the Isle of Wight, Life Around My Father, Harry Edwards, and it was published back in 2008. You might ask why I'm reading the last chapter um, because it's quite poignant 
this weekend uh, to read it. And I may read other chapters if you're lucky over the weeks. But the book is available and it's on sale from the sanctuary. Um, so you've only got to make contact with them and they can put one in the post to you. So Life Around My Father, Harry Edwards. And it's by Felicity Joan Medland, which is Harry's eldest daughter. In 1983, Dad's youngest sister, Marjorie, who had also moved to the Isle of Wight, suggested that we had a sitting at our house where we rather hoped we might contact Dad. During this sitting, I was told that I should sit and write. Well, I laughed at this as I had not the staying power or the discipline to write. Marjorie then said, I get the feeling that they want you to try automatic writing. This amused me even more as I was rather sceptical about automatic writing, believing it to be one of the easiest contracts in the business. Dad, eldest sister, Winnie, was with us at this time and agreed with Marjorie that automatic writing was something I ought to try. Winnie, like my father, was a healer. She had been practising for many years and set up her own healing centre in Streatham, South West London. But her approach to healing was very different from Dad's. At Sheer in the peace and serenity of Burroughs Lee, Dad had worked in an atmosphere of relaxed calm. Auntie Winnie, on the other hand, had a substantial house in which one large room served both as church and healing centre. That seemed to be forever full of people, cups of tea, children, charging around, and great yellow sticky buns. Of course, Winnie was known to most of us as Mrs. Durrant, and uh, it's where I first had healing um, before I met up with Harry Edwards. Auntie Winnie, complete with fag, would work away in an atmosphere of noise, clatter and chatter. She had an army of willing helpers. Some were also healers. Others carried round trays of tea and plates of cake. There was a lot of laughter, noise and happy chaos all around her, which I found quite refreshing. And Auntie Winnie's healing powers, which were quite considerable, seemed happy enough to flow from her regardless of this slap state that everybody found themselves in. Why don't you try automatic writing, she suggested on that particular evening. It will come to you if you let it. So I tried. Night after night, I tried. I would absent my mind from the pen by reciting poetry and with my eyes closed would feel it moving all over the paper. It just produced aimless scribble. I set the pen's simple task like asking it to move through the centre of a dot. It failed to do this, though I could feel a form of power passing through my finger to the point of the pen, when it would feel almost alive. So I began to weary of this pointless exercise. Then came the time when I said, right, that is enough. Five more minutes and I am packing this in. The movement of the pen changed from its meandering across the paper and there was a different motion altogether. I opened my eyes and saw the name, Harry. Not Dad or Henry as he was known by the family, but Harry, his more professional name. I can't describe what I felt. It was one of those moments of great elation. This experience has been described as a magic moment. I have known many such moments in my days as a painter, but the sight of that name was best of all. The writing began to change, became more loose, the pen moving easily and the writing began to flow across the page. I still went on reciting all the poems I had ever learned and at the end of the pen's movements would stop to sort through the lines of rubbish from where I could pick out the whole words. The very first message I saw was this. I must go landwards, many thoughts away, and calm my mind, and learn where everything is slow, for the days in this other land come warm and long. It sounded just like heaven. As the writing progressed, I was able to tell my son Stephen that he was a healer. Does he not know that he is a healer, wrote his grandfather, and that I am always with him? Stephen would never have had the confidence to start healing, which was always something he had wanted to do, without this direct message from his grandfather. The writing went on in various ways, and in the end became more direct when a whole collection of poems were eventually written. But that simply early message for Stephen was the one that had to be written, and the one that really mattered. 
Stephen lives in Wales with his wife Pauline, a very perceptive and sensitive person who in the early days of his development was able to relay directions to him and that she was hearing Claire audiently from Dad. It was quite extraordinary to hear her passing messages to us that she was hearing from Dad. They came across with all his wonderful humour. Pauline had only known Dad briefly before he died, so it was not possible that she was manufacturing them herself. Once, when I told Pauline I was going to put the kettle on for tea, she said, Your Dad says he will have his under the hollyhocks in the garden. There was no way that Pauline could have known that hollyhocks were one of the few flowers that Dad could name. He was using the word garden to describe the place where we all eventually gather and is probably another name for the astral plane. It seems to be a place that links this world with the next. I remember a night in a Welsh farmhouse when Stephen was giving healing to a farmer called Graham. He had cancer and had been given six months to live. It was a very homely scene. Two boys were playing drafts in the kitchen. Anne, Graham's wife, was sewing. Stephen and Pauline were standing by the seated Graham. Into that farm kitchen came that almost indescribable sensation that one experienced when Dad was giving one of his demonstrations a walking in the sanctuary at Shear. It was that undefiable something that surrounded him when he was healing and that kitchen was full of it. I suppose one could say it was filled with his aura. If I had been a clairvoyant, I would have seen Dad in his white coat, sitting before Graham, with both hands on Graham's solar plexus. He was there. I knew where he was and what he was doing. That was years ago, in 1984, and Graham is still with us, and it is now 2008. Shortly after this, Stephen and Pauline visited the island. A member of our family had been childless for some years. Pauline said, your father is here and is saying that he wants you to bring her over here to the island. He wants to work through Stephen. He says that she will have a baby next September. It'll be a girl and he wants her to be called Cherry after the cherry tree walk planted for him at Burroughs Lee. Well, I was dumbfounded by this message and for the life of me could not bring myself to do anything about it for fear that I was asking her to set out on what I thought could be a wild goose chase. To my shame, I decided that I could not think of raising anyone's hopes in this way. Before leaving the island and returning to Wales, Pauline said, Your dad is saying don't worry, he will work through Stephen in another way. This was in November 1985. The following year, a child, a little girl, was born, not in September, it is true, but on the 2nd of October, which for me was near enough. Sadly, she was not called Cherry, but it was quite a thought when one considers that the child's birth was foretold so positively two months before the actual conception. But then how different was this from all the other incredible happenings that had incurred since the early days of Dad's healing? How many times have we seen him walk into the living room at Burroughs Lee with a letter in his hand saying, do you know what I have here? A letter from a patient who says a doctor and the hospital consultants are baffled. The cancer that showed so positively on previous x-rays has now completely disappeared. I think that Stephen, like myself, will recall Dad saying, always remember this, after my passing, I will not be far away. My work will continue here. Just put your hand and I will be there. Which makes me feel that the blueprint still continues. I have travelled along through a large part of the blueprint with the rest of the family. We went through the Great Depression of the 1920s and the 1930s, when Dad was a printer and a stationer. I watched his gift of speech and his presence as a public speaker develop, which unknown to him was not to end in Parliament. It was part of another plan to project him forward to places unseen and undreamed of, and the first of these took place in a meeting house in Cloudsdale Road, there was all the excitement and awe as his first healings took place, and then there were the amazing days of Jack Webber, short-lived as they were. They brought so much knowledge and insight, revealing the hidden powers that lay beyond us, as yet unexposed and unexploited by man. But as, Dad's, but as Dad used to say, the time will come when all this will be ours to use. 
The power to dematerialise, which was clearly demonstrated through Jack Webber's mediumship, may one day be used for man's travel into space. War was declared, and as a family we went through this dark period in our history. Against all the odds piled against this country in the early days of the war, we came through, and all the while Dad's role as a healer was building, and his confidence and vision grew. The time came at Stoneley when we were given a short breathing space. The war was over, there was a future for all of us. Dad had reached the peak of his healing powers, and as George Daly foretold, life was about to change, and change it did. Each change in sequence in Dad's life had reached its fulfilment. Burroughs Lee lay ahead of us, and for Dad it was another threshold which he viewed with all his faith, optimism and confidence. And these he seemed to pass on to his patients as they sat before him in the sanctuary. I remember a taxi driver telling me how he picked up patients from Guildford Station and were making the journey to Burroughs Lee and not knowing who I was. He said, I don't know what goes on up there, but when I return to pick the same people up, they're different people. So much more full of life and as if they've been touched by some sort of magic. The blueprint was set to run through the next 30 years while Dad and Burroughs Lee evolved around each other. All his four children married and left home and went their separate ways, but always returning back to his family occasions for Christmas, summer parties, weekends and holidays. And at the heart of it all, there was Dad. Some years ago, I visited Burroughs Lee when it was being put through all the changes to become the place it is today. It just felt a dreadful sadness that the Burroughs Lee I knew and loved was now lost in the past. When I walked out through the front door for what I thought was the last time, I felt Dad walk through it with me. And as I was leaving, and I heard his words, Now you should know by now that nothing ever stays the same. You must put the past behind you. Let it all go. It's time to move on. Then I knew he had turned and had walked back into the house. And that is the end. I know, it, I know it's in reverse and you can't see it very well, but I haven't got the other camera available at the moment. But there's the book that Felicity uh, wrote uh, back in, well, she published it in 2008, so it would have been put together prior to that. So if you want a copy, do let the sanctuary know. They'd be only too pleased to give you one. And Felicity will be back at the sanctuary. She's in her late 90s now. Um, and when we hold the 75th anniversary, the celebration in September, um, Felicity, who is the patron, as you probably know, of the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, um, she's intending to be there with us all to celebrate the 75 years since uh, her dad bought Burroughs Lee. So let's just hope that we don't have any problems this summer and we can all be there. Um, in September. Okay. Right, that brings us to the end, which I'm sure some of you <laughs> might be relieved. It's been quite a long healing minute this morning. Um, so I'm going to leave you this morning with a beautiful and meaningful song. It's sung by Kelly Mooney. You'll recognise the tune, but maybe not the lyrics. Kelly wrote this especially for the Easter version uh, of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Enjoy. If I get the right track. Joy, hallelujah. A crown of thorns placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, Did you forget me, Father? Did you? They nailed him.
took from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown then laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet aside now in our hearts we know he died to save Three days went by, again they came to move the stone to bless the slain with oil and spice and It's Kelly Mooney and her Easter version of Hallelujah. She actually recorded that version quite a few years ago and it's been covered by other artists um, and we saw a cover on Facebook um, yesterday which is what brought it to our attention. Anyway I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm just now going to leave you with a track from Isle of Avalon CD, Rusty Crutcher, Bridget's Song, and have a lovely Easter weekend. Enjoy whatever you're going to be doing. Stay safe. And Doreen will be here with you tomorrow morning. Tracy on Monday. And I'll see you next weekend. So, thank you for bringing all your lovely energy to the Healing Minute. Thank you for being with us. And to all our friends in spirit. An enormous thank you to all of them. So take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Lots of love. See you soon. Bye-bye.